excited to welcome you guys all to Methods Global Women in Tech panel. So I'm zooming in here from Charlotte, North Carolina, but I can see the, the audience here. They're coming in from New York, it looks like Denver, California, and even across the pond over in London. So pretty exciting that even though we couldn't be all together in our Charlotte office, um, that we get to open it up to our, our global audience. Um, but this is our fourth panel in the Women in Tech series. And crazy to think that it's already our fourth one. Um, but I'm, I'm really, really excited about this one um, because this is the first time we ever have a male um, panel on. So Jose, yeah, pretty exciting. Most of our other panel topics were really focused around navigating the technology space as a female or challenges that women have overcome. But when I was starting to think about planning for this month's panel, um, it thought it was important to expand the conversation beyond just women. And that creating inclusive environments isn't just the responsibility of, of people like myself or, or you, Jen, but really the responsibility expands beyond us and that men play a very important role in closing the gender gap. Um, so really excited for today's topic. Um, today, you'll hear from both um, Jen and Jose as inspiring speakers. And another fun dynamic is that they've both worked together in the past. So they'll be sharing some fun stories and both successes and failures and common mistakes that that both men and women have made are, um, along the way is trying to be allies for each other and really supporting um, gender diversity in the workforce. Um, so I'll moderate us through today's panel um, through a set of series of different questions, but wanted to remind the audience to please send in questions over Zoom um, and I will do my best to, to monitor those. So you can do that through the Q&A. Um, so please send that through that um, there. So without further ado, let me introduce to you our first panelist here, Jen Bowman, or also known as um, j Val. <laughs> so Jen is a seasoned financial services executive with experience across technology, business, and operations. Um, most recently, Jen joined um, LPL Financial and is building and launching a technology vendor program. Um, it now leads the human capital technology space. Um, she is passionate about talent development for individuals and teaching others how to be best in class developers of talent. Um, she's also an avid um, App State football fan and is actually in Boone right now. Yeah. Um, so our next panelist is Jose Ruiz, who is also coming to us from Charlotte. Um, Jose is a 30 year veteran in the consumer lending and data analytics field. Um, having spent time in Citibank, First Union, and his last 20 years at Bank of America. Um, where he currently serves as the um, credit strategy executive for home loans. He prides himself on problem solving, innovation, um, building relationships, and inclusive leadership. Um, Jose has a passion for developing talent and is also committed to pay it forward whenever he can and share his experience in helping others navigate through their careers and personal development. Um, so sorry for the pun here, but Jose, why don't we pay it forward today for all of us? And I'm excited um, to transition into the panel topics. And I would love for you to just tell us a little bit more about your background and how your paths have intersected with Jen. Yeah, awesome. So first, let me start by saying thank you so much uh, for including me in this discussion. I think it's incredibly important. And like, you know, uh, like you said in your comments, you know, always, um, you know, ready, willing, and able and have a passion for sharing experiences and, and hoping that that can help out either mistakes or things that we've done well. So appreciate that and welcome to everybody on the line. Um, and certainly super excited to reconnect with, with Jennifer. Um, no doubt, you know, uh, you can see us glowing, right? But, um, but anyhow, so, um, so how did I, how did I connect with Jennifer? So, you know, as you mentioned, I, I, you know, I've spent a fair amount of time at Bank of America and I'll probably sound like a dinosaur here for a minute. Um, but you know, uh, I was, I was in the card business. I was leading a lot of our, um, uh, acquisition business. How do we get new loans, new customers? And, um, you know, the business was very competitive, very competitive industry and everybody was competing through the mail. Like we all get mail and email offers and, um, you know, here's a dinosaur piece. So we're thinking, how do we use technology and how do we use some of our, you know, competitive advantages because we had, you know, 5,000 plus branches. So we weren't necessarily dependent on just having to compete through the mail. We can compete to where our customers come to do business with us. 
So we were seeking a way to kind of really find value and monetize our banking center channels, not just for serving customers, doing deposits and doing those type of things, but how can we sell credit cards there? And in doing so, you know, we needed to really integrate some of our strategies into technology. So, um, you know, while we typically had on our team a lot of data analysts and strategists and, 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 you know, a lot of kind of number crunching type of folks, we needed that technology background and experience and enter j right? Mm-hmm. Um, so Jennifer had this fantastic talent. She, you know, her reputation preceded her in terms of, you know, all the wonderful work she had done otherwise. And we were like, let's see if we can have an opportunity to bring her onto our team to kind of help that intersection between what we were trying to get done using her technology experience. So we were looking for someone with that background, with fantastic business acumen, and we teach her the credit card business. Like that was something we can do. Um, and, and that's really where our paths, where our paths kind of, kind of, um, you know, crossed and where, you know, I knew of Jennifer and, and, you know, she supported us in a lot of ways, but to help drive some of our initiatives and not just kind of support our line of business, but to actually help us drive, drive what we were trying to do in our priorities. Um, she was, um, gracious enough to, to take the opportunity and join our team. And, you know, as I reflect, um, you know, a lot of hard work. Uh, a lot of major challenges, but we broke ground on a bunch of new stuff. And I mean, we we really exceeded expectations and did a lot of great things. So I have very fond memories of that and, you know, very appreciative of, of the relationship I've been able to, uh, to to form with Jennifer. Great. Thanks, Jose. Maybe, Jennifer, do you want to share a little bit more about your background and validate all the things that Jose was saying, which I'm sure are all true, but maybe your story is slightly different of how you guys intersected and, and your paths crossed? Well, it's all spot on. Uh, I actually had spent um, about 10 years in the technology division at Bank of America at the time, which have been a rich set of experiences. Um, and But as I was starting to expand where, you know, where I was going to, you know, focus in my career and how I wanted to be really, a, I wanted to be a broad spectrum type leader. This opportunity came came about. And I'll, I'll talk a little bit more about that change later on. I think some of the questions that you had planned. Uh, but I spent the last couple of days, you know, preparing for the session and and I was just telling Jose earlier, like it brought back the best memories. It was the most fun team to be on because it truly was an equitable team. Every member valued for what they brought. And by the way, we all brought the different things. And so we worked really hard. He wasn't kidding on that part. <laughs> we worked really hard and then we celebrated. I mean, it was absolutely a team effort. And it was, um, it was one of those sweet spots where you knew that your uniqueness was valued and celebrated. Yeah. It was a, it really it really was a unique, truly truly unique microcosm of this, this great experience. So Jen, why don't you dive a little deeper into that and tell us a little bit more about how yourself or Jose or other leaders um, and your teammates at Bank of America have done a good job or strategies that they've done to create inclusive cultures at work. Well, and I'll add, I'll, I'll pull the thread a bit to say I see this today at LPL Financial, which is you have to have people on your teams that, that don't just say, yes, we want equality, right? Or we want, you know, parity. They, ha- they have to like, not only want it, they have to require it. They have to demand it of their environment. Because of course we want to create an inclusive work environment because as human beings, we want to create, you know, we want to create a place where people feel valued and important work. But let's be clear. Every time you build a very diverse team, your ability to drive business results accelerates massively. So you need those leaders that don't just say, oh, I'm doing the right thing. I'm bringing you know, more candidates in that are diverse. Um, but to many who actually really knows that when they do, we win more, right? It is, it is, it is actually inherent in the business model. Mm-hmm. I, I saw that at Bank of America, especially in Jose's team, where it wasn't just about it was equality in every way. We were looking diversity in every aspect we possibly could. Um, and then I see it at LPL Financial today. I look at how we onboard teams. Um, so I've been very fortunate to be in environments where it wasn't just, I mean, it was it was demanded of our requirement. We won't win unless we do it. And Does that connect for you, Jose? Yeah. yeah. Jose, Jose, why don't, why don't you go and add a little bit more? And I think what's unique about you with your upbringing, um, how you've learned to bring in some of that inclusivity and how you've applied that to work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So definitely, um, you know, maybe a, a tie into that is, you know, as Jennifer said, is is you, you make the effort to 
focus on and be intentional about diversity, but then take that extra step, right? It's, it's, do you embrace it? Do you appreciate it? Are you open-minded? You know, do you learn from that diversity? Right. And, and then as you learn, like, um, you know, you, you said in, in, in the intro, right. 30 years experience. Right. And, and some folks would be like 30 years, I've seen it all, you know, no way. Right. I'm learning every day. And if I'm not learning from the content of what I do, I'm learning from the environment around me. I'm learning from the people I work with. I'm learning from what's going on competitively, what's going on globally, what's going on generationally. Right. And so there's always opportunity to learn. And as you get those those diverse experiences and you're open minded about that, again, that just creates that exciting kind of environment to allow you to thrive and feel comfortable being yourself. Right. So so you kind of mentioned, you know, I come from from very humble beginnings. Right. So I'm a first generation Cuban American, first in my family, born here in the States. And, um, you know, my parents came over and, you know, really required my my brother and I to focus on our studies and be respectful and family and all those values that kind of come along with it. But, you know, I was exposed to a lot and, you know, we were all, you know, humble beginning the same way. Right. So I was with all kinds of, you know, um, backgrounds and incomes. And, and, and I, I think that helped me grow and see the world through a different lens. Um, you know, I kind of think about my upbringing and I wouldn't change it for the world. I, you know, maybe not want my kids to go through what I went through and, you know, you always want to give them a little better, but, um, but, you know, having that, that, you know, I had, I mean, we were, we were poor, right. I'm not the, don't bring out the violin, right. We've had everything we needed to and, and, and everything, but, um, but we were all in the same boat, right. So put all that aside and, and you think about like the things that, that define you. So that didn't define us anymore because we were all the same way, right? So what defined you was then who you were, right? And you were Chinese or you were African-American or you were Hispanic or you were male or you were female. You were a single child. You were part of a big family. You were part of a, a family that had both parents. You were part of a single, uh, you know, single parent family. And all those challenges and all those things just kind of helped, you know, it helped me appreciate the bigger picture at a much earlier age. And I definitely think that that, you know, influenced one, the way I approached my opportunities, the way I approached um, those around me, because we recognize, you know, in that environment to get out of that, you got to help one another. Right. So um, I've been fortunate enough in my career to have, um, you know, people help me along and, and listen to me and value me for me. Um, so, you know, again, with the comments from our, from our opening, and I truly, I truly make it a priority to live it and everything I do is you got to pay it forward. Right. And, um, and that, that really makes a big difference and, you know, has kind of shaped a lot of how I approach things and how I kind of view teams. Mm -hmm. One more is I wrote this down and I actually have it on a sticky note next to my desk um, from our, our prep call was your connection before content. Oh yeah. And I love that, that, that frame um, of reference. If you could share a little bit about that and how you've used that message to apply um, to the way and how you connect with others. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So there's one thing that, you know, if you get to know me over time and you, 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 you get exposed to me, you'll, you'll see that I'm very consistent on some things, right? So connection before content is probably one of those, you know, top five or top 10 things that you'll hear me say over and over again. And after a while you might roll your eyes and be like, Oh, here comes the, connection before content discussion, but, um, you know, I, I certainly learned it. Um, you know, I've always kind of known it, right. Who are you type of thing, but I've certainly learned to appreciate it, especially in bank of America, such a large organization, a matrixed organization where you really do little, you do a lot of work like, like Jen and I said we've done in the past and in, in our current roles, et cetera. But, um, there's very little in a large organization that you can kind of get done by yourself. You got to work with and through people to get things done. And as such, you know, your collaboration, your ability to collaborate, to partner, et cetera, is very important. And then if there's anything that I've learned is that change is constant, right? So you can kind of have, um, uh, get a comfort level as I've got this partner and they're the ones that I kind of, you know, work with all the time. And while we might have different opinions, we kind of understand one another, et cetera. And you kind of foster and learn that relationship. And then all of a sudden what happens at the bank, like clockwork, every year, year and a half, two years, your partners change. Right. And then you got to start those relationships again. So that matrix is important, but it takes effort to work in that matrix. And one of the things that I found that really works really well is um, connection before content. Right. So 
if you're gonna if you're gonna work with folks, if you're gonna work with a partner, you're gonna have someone on your team, someone that you rely on, someone that's in your value chain, right? Like get to know them first, right? Pick up the hey, how's it going? Hey, you know, I'm so glad to have you on the team. I'm so looking forward to our to to what we're gonna do together. Let me tell you a little bit about what we do and what I'm responsible for. Let me tell you a little bit about me, right? Let me tell you, I live in Charlotte. I I was born and raised in New York. I'm a sports fan. I'm a dad of two girls, you know, and these type of things. And and getting that kind of fills that void because what happens is when you meet somebody initially, like human nature is for us to stereotype, right? To look for cues and see kind of what people are and what they're wearing and what they look like and whatever. And you start to form opinions, right? And and what I found is 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 don't don't leave that empty space for people to form their opinions, but fill that space as soon as you can so people can understand who you are what you stand for and what you bring to the table. And then when the difficult discussions come, the content piece, you've already made those connections and you understand it just makes those discussions so much more productive, so much more effective because you've worked through all that. And it's not kind of like, Hey, I don't know. You, you know, you can't, you get the real deal over time, but that initial kind of get to know somebody, what are they about? Get to read their cues, state your space, and what you're about and what you bring to the table, I found that to be really effective. Um, thanks for sharing that. I, I really will keep that connection before content as a reminder. Um, and Jen, how about you? Anything else that you want to add about some of the positive strategies or things that you've seen have worked well before we go into maybe some of the mistakes that others have made? Yeah, that actually is one I really do want to share with the group. And, and I, it wasn't reflecting over our experience together that really like what made that team so high performing? And really, I mean, I, I did actually go look in LinkedIn at the people that were in, that were in that team, and they have all gone on to do very significant roles. Mm -hmm. And I was like, what? What was that secret sauce? And and I, I did go back to something. I think, that, and Jose, I'm not even sure if you know that you consciously did. It will be interesting to see your response. Mm -hmm. So we all know that we should look at uh, merit, merit raises and bonuses by, you know, different diversity lenses, make sure we're looking at things um, at parity. And that's important. We absolutely should continue to do that. But what, what really made this team different is that Jose started in the beginning, which was connection over content. He understood where all of us wanted to go with our careers or where we were driving to at least in the next three to five. So we understood how aggressive and how assertive we wanted to be. Are we on a, you know, move slow? Are we on a, you know, lightning bolt trajectory? What were we looking for out of our career? So he understood that about all of us. And then I think back to our goals. Every single person on that team had a very aggressive goal on their what? Like we all swung for the fences, whether, you know, each of us had different, different responsibilities, but we were all swinging for the fences. The goals were audacious. And then sometimes I have seen where, where there's a tendency to maybe lessen the female's goal. He required us all to swing for the fences um, and then feedback. It was honest. It was transparent. Some days, Hey, you knocked it out of the park. You rocked this. Hey, I got to give you feedback. That was very, you know, that was very ineffective. Let me walk you through like how you lost your audience or, Okay, we you know we failed. Where we learn? What can we learn from this? And so it was. It didn't matter if he was talking to um, I can throw fun names out there, the people we both know. But my my male counterparts, it was the exact same feedback lens. Um, whoever we was talking to, so it went back to we both were challenged on knowing what we wanted to do. We were all were challenged with audacious goals, and then he used that input to coach us on our development. Um, and so then you didn't have to worry so much that the numbers weren't going to show up on the merit planning report out. They showed up because we all were swinging for the fences and we all been coaching. So we were all hitting big results. So there was no issues when it got to that point because we'd all been challenged. And I think I, as I look at some of the examples in comparison, maybe the reason that happens is sometimes females aren't swinging. They're swinging for the double. Um, because it all went back to goal planning. And, um, and so, uh, Jose, I wonder if you if you remember being conscious about that, but I actually think that had a lot to do with why we were successful and why these people have all gone on to be executives and leaders um, in the financial industry and, in, and even in some cases, the technology industry as well. 
Yeah. One of the things that you mentioned there about teams and where they've gone to, to, to and what they've gone to do is, you know, a, a rule of thumb that I've just seen play over time and time again in my career is good people follow good people. Right. So, so you set, you set, you, you set an example and then you, you, you bring in strong talent and that's where people want to go. You know, those are the people they want to surround themselves with. And, um, and, and especially when you have diverse talent and you have an inclusive opportunity. Um, Cause if you remember those goals, weren't my goals, those were our goals. Right. And then, and then you, we all had opportunities to influence those goals. No, that's a little much. No. And, and then the goals weren't just what you did but the goals were how you did it, mm -hmm. right? Because the what has to come with the how. The what is, you know, you can assume everybody's brilliant. Everybody's going to do a great job. But what really matters is how you approach what you do, how you get it done, how you can influence, how you can motivate, how you can create that environment. Um, so, yeah, so, you know, um, you know, th I, I, I remember it similarly, right? And, and from a different lens, but yeah, I couldn't agree with you more. Well, we've been talking a lot about the good, and now I'm going to transition us slightly into some of the more of the bad here. And Jose, with you being our first male on this, on our Women in Tech panel, I'll we'll put you on the spot again here. And can you share a little bit more about what some mistakes maybe you have made or you've seen others have made specifically when they're trying to be allies for women? Yeah, definitely. So two things come to mind, you know, as we talk about them, they might appear to be very obvious, right? But they are the things that kind of, uh, you know, I see appear, um, uh, you know, most frequently and things that need to be addressed, right? So one is kind of, you know, um, try not to have favorites, right? Try, try, try to, to utilize, appreciate every angle, every corner of your team, every, every, every skill set. You know, when we have discussions about where we're going, what we're doing, I want to hear from my direct report and I want to hear from the, the, the least experienced person that just joined a team because they can have a different fresh point of view that we're not considering because we've been too focused on things or, you know, again, now more than ever, I'm kind of aware of the generational differences and how, you know, um, 10 years ago when the generational differences were like something that was really kind of being focused on, I think the attitude there was, you know, things need to get done our way. What is all this variability to how we've done things, right? And I've evolved that thinking to be like, no way, like I'm the dinosaur. I need to learn and evolve, right? Because if I don't, I'm going to get stuck behind and I'm not going to appreciate some things that I can learn from. Um, so, so appreciating those differences, making sure you're getting from everybody. Like I've seen people that don't do that. And, you know, I've, I've gone and coached them. And, and like Jen said a little bit, you know, post-mortem and feedback. Feedback is a gift you know, and, and, and maybe obnoxiously, um, and some may like it, some don't, but I, you know, I, I never feel I have anything to lose. I give feedback all the time. Right. And, and I give the feedback, I try to give the feedback in a positive, constructive way. And then also for there to be no surprises, right? Like Jen mentioned, you know, when you go through, if the feedback's constant, when you get to the end of the year, there's not a surprise about how you did because you, that's being reinforced every day. So anyway, so so don't have those favorites. Don't always go to the same person, male, female, you know, black, white, Hispanic. It doesn't matter. Like, just make sure you give everybody opportunity and you value what everybody can bring to the table. And then the other thing real specific, I guess, to, to today's conversation, right, is probably something that is obvious. And, you know, probably as a first guy, you know, I want to kind of mm -hmm. back up. But, you know, the whole mansplaining thing. Right. And, and, and that gets that, you know, I, I, I see in here, I've got two daughters and I've got, you know, uh, my wife who, and they're all very vocal, very independent. And it makes sometimes a tough environment here being the only guy at the house, but uh, cause I get that feedback all the time, but um, you know, the mansplaining, the whole, you know, assuming that you don't know and the condescending kind of attitude. And it's like, you know, have you, you know, did, like, you know, did Jennifer ask me for feedback? Did she ask me to explain something to her? If she didn't, why am I explaining and going and, and getting on this, like, you know, on this pedestal and going through all the things that I know and that you should know because you probably know it anyway, right? And and if you didn't know it, you'd ask. And I shouldn't assume that you don't know. And, um, and you know, so so that that whole aspect, you know, I see that happen still quite a bit. And again, every once in a while, and you can do it with people that you connected with a little more effectively and be like, come here, 
you know, let's take a walk. Like, you know, what, what just went on in that room, like, here's, here's, you know, here's what was great. Here's an opportunity we could have maybe done it a little differently, or here's maybe have a follow-up conversation with, with, with Mary, because, you know, that conversation with Mary, she might walk away thinking you meant something different. Mm -hmm. Um, so, so those are kind of things that, and I think sometimes they happen unintentionally, Mm -hmm. um, but they're blind spots, right? And you need to, when you see those blind spots, either, you know, depend on somebody to tell you because feedback is a gift, um, um, or, you know, try to be aware and get, you know, reflect on those things because the less you do that, the better off we all are. Yeah. And Jen, just jump right. Can I just jump right in, Steph? So so Jose teed up perfectly one of the things that I would say it's a caution for all people, but in this dynamic, I'd say it's really relevant, which is um, a phrase I learned very early on in my career, which is don't steal other people's power. Mm -hmm. And I don't mean power like pounding your fist on the table. I don't mean that kind of power. I mean, influence over a room, um, followership of the people they're working with. Don't steal their power. So exactly what Jose said, you just teed it up so beautifully. Um, I, I, I've seen conversations where the leader comes into the room, they've appointed Sally to lead the, to the work effort. We've done a great session of setting expectations, aligning on goals. We're all clear on roles, responsibilities. So Sally's really set up. And then the next thing, and, and, and I actually believe it to have been in, in truly in good spirit. Like they, There was no uh, malice intention, but the male leader will close with, okay, and if Sally, if you have any problems with that, you just, you know, you come to me or anybody can come to me. Again, I'm sure they meant it well-intentioned. I'm here to support you. But what they just said was, I'm not real sure Sally can do it. So I'm here too, too. Just like you said, what the man's planning, right? Let Sally ask if Sally needs help because um, when you do that in open forum, you steal a little bit of their power. Um, and that's it's true for universally for for anyone, but I think in this context, it's particularly it's particularly relevant. So cautious on not stealing people's power. Yeah, Jose, you also said something else that I, I actually want to pull the thread on a bit more, which is um, not having your favorites. One thing I worry about as we move to, I mean, almost every company is moving to a hybrid environment, right? As we move, as we return to the office. Most companies are going to be using some form of a hybrid environment. Um, I've been doing a lot of listening to a lot of these programs, and one of the biggest cautions we're hearing is proximity bias. Don't just focus on who you see data, who you see more often. Focus on the work product. Um, while this is not universally true, data suggests that women and, pe- and people of color are more, more likely to take advantage of the flexible work arrangements for various reasons, microaggressions in the workplace or needing to care for family. And so the, the risk we run is to undo a lot of the progress we've made by focusing on who's actually in the office with us. Yeah. So um, mm-hmm. again, no one would do it in purposely. No one would say, oh, I'm going to do this, but be aware that's a potential bias that could be created. Totally. Mm-hmm. totally. I hadn't thought of that. That's great. Yeah, that's really great. And especially now, I, I know some of the banks are starting to go back to the office. I think Bank of America is one of them. And so starting as things start to open up, um, keeping that in mind, because we've transitioned to a more flexible work environment. And, and what does that do? Um, Jose, anything else you want to add from mistakes that you've seen from yourself or others before we open up, it looks like we got some questions in from the audience. Yeah. And, and again, I, you know, this conversation is just so natural. I really, really enjoy it. Let's, let's extend it. Let's go longer now. <laughs> yeah. uh, but, but um, you know, what Jen said about stealing power, like one of the things that I think could be a blind spot sometimes, and it, you know, I, I don't have numbers to quote, but you know, we know kind of there are, there are differences in leadership and the distributions of those that, that we're making a lot of progress on and being very intentional about, but um, as a leader, again, one of the things I think you got to do is is let those that do the work represent their work, right? Because if I'm if I'm the leader of the team and I've already been the leader of the team and we're all busting it to get something done, and then we have an opportunity to go, you know, showcase what we do to senior leaders or to to, to pitch our case or whatever it is, um, you know, if I'm if I'm the only one who's got the 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 magnifying voice, right, to get that message out then I'm the center of attention and I've stolen kind of that, that input mm-hmm. and that influence from the rest of the team. So, you know, and, and sometimes you see it and you got to be careful sometimes because 
I see some posers every once in a while. I like, you know, they're the tee up guy. I'm going to tee it up. Right. And, and, they don't, and they don't know anything. Right. So you got to balance being the tee it up guy, but, but, you know, you got to give the opportunity to your folks to, um, demonstrate showcase what they've done you know to to learn how to operate in that environment to get the experience of that because you only get good at the things that you practice and where you spend time right Mm -hmm. and if you're not given the opportunity to spend time doing that then how are you going to get good at it how am i going to be able to observe what you do there to be able to coach you and develop you right so um so so you know again maybe a blind spot sometimes is you know being being a one that's going to represent what we did and you'll say oh my team did it but give the mic to someone else and let them, let them tell you what they've done and let them make their impressions and have their work kind of, you know, um, define who they are and kind of create their identity and their brand, because that's how you get the folks like Jen said before that then continue to develop, continue to climb and then look over time where they go and what they do. It's the, the, the word I hear a lot used a lot today is amplification, right? That's exactly what you're doing, right? You're not having the voice, you're call it, you're bringing that voice to the table so that the people who brought the ideas, and in this case, we're talking about, you know, women and technology and, but it's, it's, it's letting the, let that female pr- share her thoughts. And sometimes you may have to require them to do that, right? It may be an uncomfortable, be uncomfortable. Place, yeah, but be that engine that supports them and making that happen. Um, I, I think that's, that's, that's very, that's really critical. Yeah. Yeah. Steph, I had one other, um, one other sort of lesson learned. I've seen parts of it done right and parts of it done wrong, but um, it resonated for me personally. Um, so I wanted to share one other item, if you don't mind. Go for it. Um, and it's the idea of there being seasons of life. Um, I started my career, uh, right out of college, go Mountaineers. Um, <laughs> and, um, I was on fire for the world. I had all the time. I had all the, pa- I mean, energy, like it, I was, it, there was really nothing that I could got in my way for pouring everything into work because that's what I chose at that time. Um, go for, I get married. I have a kid. I have another kid, right? Like, So I started to go through seasons and this would be my caution to really any teammate, but I would say in this case, male, male teammates is be aware people go through seasons and just because they hit a season where they say, okay, I need to slow the acceleration. I still want to do a great job. I still want to deliver results and be a very, very valuable contributor, but for the next 18 months, I'm probably not trying to grow for the next job. In my case, I'm learning to wake up, you know, learn it's years ago, obviously, but I'm learning to, you know, have a kid that wakes up every two hours all night long. And um, I'm trying to figure out how to balance like my life so that I get time with my kids, but still enjoyment out of my work. And that was a season. And then, um, and I would say in, in, in one case, I, I was a little ready to hit the eject button. And what I mean by that is I got a little panicked. It felt overwhelming. How could I continue to invest in learning all the newest technology and where we were going and set, setting the strategy for where we needed to go for, in our case, the channel technology? Um, at the same time, I want to spend time with my, my kid. So I, I struggled with that and I was ready. To, I was really ready to hit the eject button. And then that's a case where I suspect if my leader had asked me more questions, had dug deeper than I'm ready for a change. They dug a little bit deeper. We might have found a different answer. Now it turns out it works well because that's one of the reasons I got over to Jose's team. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, was that Jose? It all worked out. So it all worked out um, as things often do. But I would say then second child comes along, right? And so yeah. another season of I need a little time to still going to do great work, still want to be a value contributor of the team, but I'm not. I need another few another period of time where I'm not hitting the acceleration button. Mm-hmm. And then and then okay. Put me back in, coach. I mean, not that I wasn't in. I don't want to imply that, but I'm ready again. I'm ready for you to accelerate. And so having an appre, and that's what Jose did. Okay, I heard you. Mm-hmm. Um, but that's what I, that's what I wanted. And so I would say, really be conscious that people can go through seasons. And just because there's a dial back for a period of time doesn't mean that person isn't going to dial it back in. And be aware for that. So that's just one, you know, one area of that's not overly obvious until you get. 10 years down the road, you can really see how that affected your outcomes. We become wiser. We become right. wiser with time. But, Is um, that what these are? Yeah, yeah right. <laughs> but, but to build on that a little bit, I know, I know, Steph, you want to go on, but, you know, it's, it's it, in, in that example you gave where you compared and contrast, it's, 
it's filling that that empty space again, like I talked about with the stereotypes, right? So you're going through something, you're, you know, obviously you new mom, everything, it's somewhat obvious, right? But it's not always quite that obvious, right? And and you define yourself as multiple selves, right? You're a professional, you're a daughter, you're a, you're a community in, involved in different things, you're, you know, a mom, right? And as you go through these things, it, it's not so much, I would say, and reflecting, it's not so much that you were taking your foot off the accelerator a little bit, you were, you were redirecting kind of who you were through that time period. And you were become, you were becoming the mom of two. Right. And with that comes a certain reality of what that is. And then the more we understand and know that it's like, Hey, Jen, how you doing? How's it going? Whatever. And then, and then what you can do is you adopt. And especially if you got a good high performing team, you rely on your team because over time there are going to be times where you need someone to like overcompensate a little bit and help out. And there are going to be times where it's like, Hey, Jen, Joe over here is going through his season and he's going to need a little something. Right. And, and that really matters quite a bit, but it's, it's, you were just being another part of yourself because you are so many people, right? We all are so many people. If you define yourself just as that one person at work, you're probably not looking at yourself, right. Or you should kind of reevaluate because you want to be, those different people, right? And you just had that that you were going through, yeah. And and we didn't talk about the seasons before, and this is particularly relevant to me as Jen and you and Jose both know I'm gonna stand up here, but as I have this guy. Awesome. <laughs> you're coming as my first kid, right? Like I, I was actually, I was flying yesterday and it was my, I think my last flight as I entered into my third trimester and I was flying with a coworker. And he asked me around like, hey, Steph, with going into this um, Hitachi integration, uh, we recently got acquired by Hitachi. Um, why, why don't you put yourself out there a little bit more? Why don't you be on the forefront? And I wish I knew about the, the seasonality of, of where I am in my life and where I am in my professional career. And thinking about like, as I think about to have a kid in, in two months here, right now is my season to um, tie things up, think about what it's like to be a mom, but also balance that with work. And so I just, I really, really liked that story, Jen, that you shared that we all have different seasons and whether it's being a mom or, or whether it's um, challenging ourselves and somewhere else in our career, just keeping that in mind and being okay to share that with ourselves and with our coworkers. 